Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to worship this nice soggy morning. Thank you for being here. I do have a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, uh, to, uh, through the rest of the month, we are collecting um, uh, monetary donations for the gift cards for the Christmas food. So don't forget that. Also, Sunday school will happen today, I believe, I hope. Um, to this, this Sunday and next Sunday, we should be able to smash it all in in two weeks. <laughs> other than that, anyone else have any other announcements? Okay, seeing none, let us begin worship. Let us stand for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning, and our end. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal one, robed in majesty and mercy. We confess that we, sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth, that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors, following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again, and rejoice in your salvation. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, may we, your people, who look forward to the birthday of Christ, experience the joy of salvation and celebrate that feast with love and thanksgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you. He will rejoice over your gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproachfully. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, like a time when I gathered you. For I will make you renowned and praised as among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortune before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart. And your mind in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people, the gospel of the Lord. A colonel in the army was in his office. A private knocked on his door. Wanting to impress the private, the colonel picked up the phone and started talking while waving this private into his office. The colonel stated, yes, Mr. President, I will get on that right away. You have the right man for the job. Thank you for thinking of me. By the way, give my best to the first lady, and hung up the phone. The colonel then turned to the private and said in a harsh tone, what do you want? The private said, nothing, sir. I'm just here to fix the phone. <laughs> ah, an inflated sense of our own self-importance, which seems to be what John might be dealing with in today's gospel. Regardless, John has harsh words for the crowds that have gathered around him hoping to be baptized. John begins with calling all of them a brood of vipers, which probably isn't winning him any friends. He informs them that he, they must bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. In other words, just because you have religious heritage and have Abraham as your ancestor doesn't mean that you belong to God's people. The generational promise of the Old Testament covenant is that God would bless Abraham and his descendants. John is telling the crowds that just because you're related doesn't get you a free pass. You need the faith of Abraham. Actions and lineage just aren't going to cut it. God can raise up new people out of stones. In other words, God is more than willing to start over with people who will listen and obey. John goes on to drive the point home, saying, even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Well, that's got everybody shuffling their feet and pulling at their tunics. And obviously the crowds are nervous because they start asking questions. What then should we do? John tells the crowd, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Basically, the rules come straight out of kindergarten. If you have more than you need, you need to share. But the tax collectors are in the crowd as well, and they know the trouble they've caused, so they too ask, teacher, what should we do? Now, the tax collectors were known for collecting the taxes owed and adding their own personal fees. Some of those fees were rather hefty. To them, John says, collect no more 
than the amount prescribed to you. So, in kindergarten terms, be fair. And finally, the soldiers also asked him, and what, what should we do? The soldiers at the time were known for abusing their positions of power. And John says to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. Kindergarten lingo, don't bully people. Notice John does not say that the tax, tax collectors and soldiers shouldn't be working for the government. He just tells them to do their jobs fairly and honestly. So at this point, the crowds are wondering if John is the Messiah. And if they aren't freaked out enough about what John has already said, John drives the point home with, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Well, if that doesn't put the fear of God in them, nothing will. I think it's quite easy to dismiss this gospel lesson as something that doesn't apply to us in 2024. Let's face it, today's tax collectors aren't allowed to collect more than people owe, if there are even enough people left to collect taxes. And the soldiers don't go around beating the general public over the head or robbing people, so that's sort of meaningless today. But let's go back to one of our first sentences in this lesson. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. We Christians become complacent, and we can easily say something similar. Oh, we're baptized. We don't need to worry about that because we're already saved. Well, yes, but don't we need to act like Christians too? Aren't we supposed to do what God has commanded and follow his teachings? Today's lesson calls for the crowds to repent, which means having a change of mindset, to feel sincere regret or remorse about one's sin. But for repentance to truly happen, there has to be a change in a person's behavior. The person has to start doing the thing they're supposed to do instead of just paying lip service to it. Take, for example, a very large American corporation that shall remain nameless. On the bottom of their receipts is printed that their purpose is to honor God in all we do, to serve others, to pursue excellence, and to grow profitably. The last one I totally agree with. And I believe that to grow profitably is the only one of the four that they really care about. This company is known to be horribly difficult to deal with, and if you end up ordering too much from them, they flat out refuse to take any of their unused product back for a refund. Oh, by the way, their major competitor does take it all back, and their receipts say nothing about honoring God. God does not want us, corporate or individual, to tell people we are Christians. We need to show people we are Christians. We need to share with others who are less fortunate. We need to be the champions of those who cannot champion for themselves. We need to be the grace in this world and show that love is extended to all people. Advent is a difficult time on so many levels. Again, we are out with the shop till you drop mentality, doing Christmas preparations, baking cookies, decorating, attempting to make the perfect Christmas even more perfect. And there's nothing wrong with that. But God still calls us to do what we are called to do. Help others, donate to others, because Jesus truly is the reason for the season. House Beautiful may be calling us for pictures of our beautifully adorned living rooms, but there are others who don't have homes that need our help as well. It's so easy to ignore what we are called to do in this most festive of seasons, and it's easy to get caught up in all the celebrations. But fear not. Allow me to quote from pastor and commentator David Luce. 
We are imperfect people who live in, suffer from, and too often succumb to systems of inequality. And yet God is present. God is there. God is coming to us amid our imperfections and failings to call us to more, promising to meet us in need of our neighbor, to bless our efforts to reflect God's love, and to claim us as God's own, even when we fall distressingly short. Boring, mundane, too soft? Maybe. But also, I think, faithful to the promise that because God has promised to redeem all, we are free to nurture and love those around us. Because Christ has saved the world, we can devote ourselves to care for our little corner of it. And because the one who is coming will judge with righteousness, we do not need to judge others, but rather proclaim the mercy we ourselves have experienced. And perhaps in this way, and with many other exhortations and examples, we, like John, will proclaim the good news. Let us go out and show this world the Christ in Christmas this season. Thanks be to God. Amen.
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we prepare for Emmanuel, God with us, let us pray for all people and places that long for God's presence. God, our salvation, fill the hearts of all the baptized with thanksgiving that we may make known your mighty deeds and proclaim your exalted name with voices that never waver and hands that never grow tired. Lord, in your mercy. Help us to repent of smugness, leaving behind the attitude that we are better than others by virtue of our religion, nationality, or social standing. Bring us instead to rely only on you and to open ourselves to works of charity. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the nations of the earth toward the fulfillment of your will that all people may enjoy peace, justice, and daily bread. Put an end to the violence and warfare and overcome the powers that advance evil in your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Give your peace, which surpasses all understanding, to all those who suffer from illness of mind, body, or spirit, especially those we name in our hearts before you. Fill our hearts with compassion that we may be the hands and feet of Christ to all who long for healing. Lord, in your mercy. Shape the mission and ministry of this parish that bearing fruits worthy of repentance, we may give clothing to those in need food to the hungry, and hope to all who come searching for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Savior of the nations, come and receive these prayers and the pleas of our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray with confidence the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, The peace of the Lord be with you. Please greet those around you.
Let us pray. Creator God, you made the whole world, even the furthest stars, and you draw near to feed us. We praise you for these gifts of bread and wine. Strengthen us with this food that we may live in expectation for the advent of our Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through your Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light and bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are, glory are yours, word of God incarnate, power of the most high, one God, now and forever. Amen. God feeds us with tender mercy. body of Christ given for you. Let us eat together. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us drink together. Let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for the gift of life, for the bread of salvation. We thank you for the coming among us, for leading us into peace. We thank you for showering us with mercy, for sending us into the world. Come, Lord Jesus, and go with us as we feed the hungry in your name. Amen. 
God of endings and beginnings, God in the darkness and the light, God, our hope for the journey, bless and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way for Emmanuel.